anybody out there listening that wants to get us some comments on anything, please send us an email to the school website and we will answer it right away. Um, let's go on with the agenda. Uh, there's a little bit of an oversight on the agenda and we need to amend that to add to uh, new business uh, item five that we need to elect a vice chair tonight. So could I get a uh, motion for the agenda with that added, please? I move to approve the agenda with the amendment to new business number five with the election of a new vice chair. Super. I got a second out there. Mark Parker just seconded. Oh, super. Okay. It's uh, in moved and seconded. Okay. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Joel, can you count them for me? You're good. They're all there. Oh, super. Thank you all very much. Okay. <laughs> um, can we get a motion to pass the consent agenda, please? All right, I move to approve the uh, consent agenda. Thank you. Is there a second, please? I second. Okay, great. Hi, Deb. Already Hi. moved and second. All those in favor, please raise your hand, please. How are we doing, Joel? Your motion carries. All in favor. Perfect. Oh, thank you all very much. All righty. Uh, thing I've been looking forward to, the middle school and high school presentation for the curriculum. Mike, you want to start that? I'll just say hello to everyone. It's good to see you all. And I'm excited about seeing this presentation as well. And I'm just going to turn it over to Amy Aguero, the lead on the adoption and the uh, principals, Julie Johansson and uh, Jenny Collins. I'll just do a quick little intro. This is Amy. Um, so yes, we have our, our middle school team. Last month, you all got to hear from our, our elementary team and thank you so much for the approval of, of that adoption. We're in the process of getting those materials secured and ordered and that's an exciting movement for Crestwell School District. Tonight, you get to hear from both middle and high school and I'm thrilled to, to tell you that they are presenting to you the same curriculum. So it's a curriculum that runs through middle and high school. Um, so you'll get to see again that idea that we've been working with of the K-12 alignment. In this case, we're looking at the 6-12 piece, having some alignment with that transition year. So I don't see Julie, but my screen is a little bit smaller tonight. But Julie, I'm going to turn it over to you and Jenny to start with your presentation. Okay, before I share our screen, I just want to let everyone know that originally the middle school and the high school gave separate presentations so we did our best to merge those um, where there was alignment because we are looking forward to trying to adopt 612. Um, but please give us a little bit of grace for that because obviously we have really practiced our separate presentations and this will be a great first round final round together here with a combined presentation. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, and I'm gonna leave it on this mode only because when we merged the two presentations, we did write whose slide and who was speaking so we don't speak over each other. Um, so I apologize for that, but I'm hoping you guys can see what's happening on my screen. Are we good? Yep. Okay, so this is our presentation uh, and our recommendation for the ELA adoption for Cresswell Middle School and Cresswell High School. Our adoption committees, I'm gonna introduce mine and then I'm gonna ask Jenny to introduce her folks. I have Patrick Hartsfield, who's an eighth grade language arts teacher, Kathy Holst, who's a special education teacher, Laura Taylor, who's a seventh grade language arts teacher and myself. Jenny. All right, so um, my team is a little bit smaller. I have um, Jared Wolfson. He is a special education teacher, also teaches um, our language arts foundations class and Deborah Handman is uh, one of our language arts teachers. So thank you both for being here tonight. And Jenny is going to go over our CSD timeline as far as the pieces that were put in place for this adoption for CMS and CHS. So our timeline was not 
a, a ton different than what you already heard for the elementary school. So I don't know that I need to elaborate a, a huge amount on that and take time um, other than um, they were really quick to um, identify a curriculum that worked best for them. And um, both the middle school and the high school were kind of teetering on two that we really liked. Um, but what we found was that the connection between um, Houghton Mifflin um, Harcourt, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt is HMH, um, is, is where we landed. So we, um, we did our, our, sent out our presentations and our viewing options in March and in April. And um, our teachers have had it in their classrooms um, to use and look at um, during that time frame as well. Um, and now we are just prepared to move forward with the adoption. So for both school sites, the programs that were available for adoption um, that met uh, ODE requirements were Amplify Education, Carnegie Learning Inc., Ingenuity, which is LearnZillion, Great Minds PBC, HMH, um, Inquiry by Design, McGraw-Hill Study Sync, Open Up Resources, and Savas Learning Company. So obviously we have put HMH in a highlight um, as both sites have chosen that for our recommendation. One of the things that we looked at when considering what would be best for our school sites in our district were the links provided by ODE on how HMH met their adoption scorecard. So if you'll notice on the left, the ODE adoption criteria HMH met all of those areas, and that was really important to us. Not all of the curriculum adoptions or options met those areas. These are live links that include publisher presentations and video notes, and I really just left them so that if board members or the public are interested in watching those, they will be available. They are currently posted on our individual sites. Um, but this presentation will be available on the district website once we're done this evening. Um, and then moving to the next slide, Jenny, if you want to talk more about it, it really is just the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, you have anything to add? Um, nope, this slide actually kind of even looks the same. So, uh, <laughs> so as minutes, you can so see, it met it. Perfect. Yeah. So for both schools and really for all of the schools, we really wanted to make sure that whatever we adopted met the vision and mission statement of our district. The elementary read this to you at the last presentation. I'm not going to go over it, but it really does address the vision uh, and include rigor, relevance, and relationships. So just as the elementary talked about their individual priorities, both CMS and the high school came up with their team's priorities. And much of these are going to be what you've heard for elementary and you will probably hear on the high school slide. But for CMS, we have theme one, engagement, theme two, vocabulary, theme three, writing, theme four, additional multi-tiered supports, theme five, assessment, theme six, user learner friendly, and theme seven, grammar. And those themes are in no particular order of importance. I'm now gonna ask uh, Kathy to help us on the next slide. Oh, thank you. So when our team got together in January and looked at the rubric, the themes that Julie was just presenting that are also here are definitely the ones that we felt were essential to our middle level learners. And any curriculum that we selected had to be heavily weighted in these areas. And they, at the same time, these also <clears throat> tie directly into the vision and mission statement for the district. So I've just even quoted it in this chart here. And so for engagement, the, the mission or vision statement, it dictates that it should be learning that is shaped by student voice. And that is definitely true for this curriculum that we've selected to um, push forward. The students have multiple opportunities in various formats to have their voice heard through their curriculum. Vocabulary definitely hits the uh, definition for rigor. It lays the foundation for their educational experience that furthers their academic career. Writing, again, rigorous. What's especially relevant about this curriculum is the personalized learning because there are so many different ways that students can respond to the prompts or select the prompt that they respond to. It gives them personal expression of how they were impacted or interacted with the text. 
Assessment and additional multi-tiered supports go hand in hand. The assessments give instructors the tools to allow uh, learners to reach their full potential because it can, if the student isn't progressing as expected, there are so many additional supports that opens up those multiple K to 12 pathways. And then I cannot stress how um, key this next one is, user and learner friendly. This curriculum is very easy for the teacher to use. They're not gonna be fumbling around or confused by how to present. And it's so engaging for the learners that that allows those uh, in the classroom for those uh, relationships to be built, which is so important. And then the final piece that we really felt was foundational was key was grammar that allows the students to extend beyond the classroom because your English language arts area is reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And sometimes kids will say, well, well they wonder, when am I ever going to use this, whatever they've learned in the classroom in their life? Well, they're going to be speaking all the time. And this uh, curriculum is going to give them that foundation to extend that um, in their everyday life. Next slide. So starting off, again, these were no order of importance, but engagement is the perfect one to start with. Any teacher is always gonna have a hook for their lesson to get those learners wanting to learn about it. And that's exactly what this curriculum does. As you can see here, this is just a couple of shots from the curriculum. It's visual, it's bright, there's graphics, there's images, gives you a lot to look at, which already gets your mind thinking about it. The texts are modern, so the, what they see in this curriculum, they might even see in the bookstore or the library. They will hear themselves or see themselves represented through the diverse characters and authors. There's different styles of text, so it includes graphic novels, memoirs, verse, uh, there's a lot here that's going to really engage those learners. And then right away, this is just a preview of the first unit in the sixth grade one. And there's a question down there for them to engage their mind with, giving them an opportunity to wonder about it. Next slide. This is another screenshot of multiple ways that engagement happens through this curriculum. It's a little hard to read, but down there in the middle, it's the essential question. What are the ways you can make yourself heard? That's speaking directly to student voice and they're giving multiple opportunities to respond to that and start thinking about it. This is an excerpt um, from the unit on Brown Girl Dreaming, which is a book you can find again in your libraries at the local bookstore highlighted on the shelves. It's a memoir, it's in verse. So again, multiple different types of text for our learners. And next slide, yep, thank you. So a second, we've got vocabulary, highly important that we build the vocabulary of our learners to get them ready for the next level and understand what we're doing here. Vocabulary is included in every lesson. It defines it for the students in a simple way. And then there's two types of vocabulary, one being academic and the second being the content specific. And I'd like to show you what that looks like on the next slide. This is an example of some excerpts from the academic vocabulary. You can see there's a group of five words that they'll be reviewed before they're reading. And these are words that kids need to know just to understand what's expected of them as a learner. And then those words are previewed or reviewed again after and then brought back in the next lesson. So there's no one and done. There's um, continuing and continuing and continuing till we can fade some and bring in some more to build that academic language, which prepares them for the next level. And then another example of vocabulary is the content specific. It's harder to see on here, but there's a nice little group of four words, which is a very reasonable amount for a middle school learner to grasp for new learning. There's different types of activities that those words will be um, practiced with. So that keeps that engagement and variety. Now I'm gonna invite Mr. Hartsfield to speak on theme three. All right. Theme three is writing. And obviously writing is an important part of language arts. It's something that's really significant. One of the things we liked about uh, this, this curriculum is it had a lot of different opportunities for writing that were built in and engaged with the reading. So we do a reading and then the writing would be part of it. And it had a variety of different kinds of writing. We're, we're concerned with different kinds of writing, argumentative writing, informational writing, narrative, and all of these things are important. And uh, the text did a good job of providing all these different opportunities for it. As well, some students have difficulty with organizing their writing, and this provided graphic organizers to help the students along with their path. So it cre created a scaffolding to help the students in their journey as they, as they grow as writers and they grow in these different skills. 
And then another thing we've been talking a lot about lately in the school, in the middle school, is how we can help our students with their note-taking skills. We feel like this is an important skill that we want our students to be strong in. And one thing we liked about this curriculum is it actually has some lessons on note-taking and some opportunities to work towards that. And then um, the next slide here is uh, multi-tiered supports. And as we're aware as, as students come to us, not everybody is at the same level of skills. Not everybody comes with the same strengths or the same weaknesses. And we wanna be able to help students no matter where they're at. And, and this curriculum is really strong about that. For students for whom reading is a bit of a challenge, um, there's several different things, including some, some guided skill practice where it sets according to whatever their, their reading level is, their Lexile score. It checks, the, it checks that and allows us to find reading practice that's appropriate for them. Um, there's also in the online um, section of the curriculum, they've got uh, read alouds where there's an audio reader reading with them and the words are highlighted as they read along on the screen. There's also graphic organizers to help the readers uh, put together and understand what it is they read and put it into organization. Um, for readers that, are, that, that English is their second language, there's also some great tools there. We've got some of the texts are provided in both English and in Spanish. And then we've got glossaries that have multi, multilingual as well. So there's opportunities for there. And then for those students that need an extra challenge, because some students come to us and they are um, very strong readers. And for them, they're not getting enough challenge just with the basic materials. There are texts that are provided that are more rigorous and a little more challenging, and along with some um, activities and some assignments that are more challenging, a little more cognitive, and a little more difficult to accomplish. So this curriculum does a great job of, of meeting those needs. Patrick, we'll now have Laura. Hi, I did theme five, which was assessment. And there's a variety of formative and summative assessments that HMH has to offer. Um, there's many diagnostic and standards tracking um, to keep us teachers organized and also to help us with data collection. Um, there's online quizzes, uh, auto graded reading quizzes, um, multiple choice assessments that are very short. Um, and there's three different types of diagnostic tests within HMH. Um, there's also really quick assignments or assessments that you um, can just test content right after you do the lesson. Um, these formative assessments um, and summative assessments. So I'm gonna go over both of them. So with the formative assessments, it includes guided reading questions. Um, there's five minute assessment practice at each core reading. Um, analyzing the text student guides at end of each reading selection and quick check notes in the teacher's edition. So you are able to just do a quick check with your students to make sure they are getting that lesson of the day. And then I'm gonna go on to the summative assessments. Um, there's selection tests, unit tests, there's a unit planning guide with customizable assessments so you can take out different standards and add them in um, according to what you're teaching at that point. And these assessments show the skills and standards that the students are working on. So um, there's a student edition and in those student edition, all of these things are included. Um, there's assessments that are just modeled directly after the state assessments and even the SATs. Um, there's technology enhanced items so the students can work within the assessments to um, choose different types. And then there's also two part questions with the selection and unit tests, not just multiple choice questions. And um, I really like that there's a performance-based assessment. So similar to what they do on their um, national tests. And also there's assessment reports and standard reports. So you're able to see if what standards they've accomplished for the year, and you're able to see what they still need to work on on those reports. Um, the next section that we um, were looking at were, was if, if it was user and learner friendly. And what we really liked about this was not only was it easy for the students to read and not cluttered, they were able to find everything that they need, but the teacher um, part was very easy for us to use. So it has a teaching pacing guide that's realistic 
and it allows you to customize it, which allows some flexibility. And also it has um, some suggestions of novels. There's short stories that are aligned to each theme and there's online options and even current events that you can um, in integrate into your curriculum. It helps you integrate the novels and independent texts for whole group and even small group reading. And also there's an online piece to HMH and that links easily to Google Classroom. And also there's teacher manuals that give information um, and skills to work with the students. And I really like that there's an online teacher's corner with tutorials and videos to help the teachers when they're just starting or if you wanna do something different with the curriculum. So theme seven was grammar. Um, there's multiple pieces of grammar within this curriculum. There's a standalone grammar practice book and you can see it, it's the green one and it's a separate book, but there's also grammar embedded in the larger um, student edition. So um, it, all of those connect to the anchor test, text and it, and it covers a wide variety of concepts, but then you can go back to the grammar practice and pull out lessons from there as well. I'm going to have the high school go over their priorities for curriculum adoption. So um, I will just say that as far as the curriculum goes, much of what they presented um, uh, is also what interested us in this, in this curriculum. Um, and so while our themes may be slightly different, the resources um, that were presented really are the same, which will be nice for students as they transition to have that continuity. Um, in the packages of curriculum that they're seeing. So our themes were engagement, um, uh, our theme two that we wanted our curriculum to be culturally responsive. We wanted it to be accessible and to provide scaffolding and support um, to our special education students, our um, English language learners, um, and then just our, we have students at various levels um, as a result of the pandemic. So just having that built in support um, was key for us, not only for the students, but also for teachers and their usability of the curriculum. Um, vocabulary and background knowledge is theme four. opportunities for text interpretation, analysis and discussion, um, just really reaching beyond um, what's on the pages and in the book and, and getting kids to, to think creatively and outside the box. Um, writing, student voice, relevant student representation, and assessment. And so um, theme one is engagement. And with engagement, we were really looking for a curriculum. Um, and Deborah, I can't see you. So if you or Jared want to jump in, um, I know you said your internet was a little bit shaky. So I can't tell if you're... Yeah, I'm on my Chromebook, so I hope you can, can you guys hear me okay? I'm really low volume. <laughs> um, hey, okay, Deborah. But, um, <laughs> hey, Deborah. Yeah, um, you, you are a little one thing that I just wanted to say that, yeah, can you hear me? No, I'll present for you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Sorry about that. So I'm not sure if you're able to hear me at this point or if it's still picking. OK, it looks like it's me. I'm trying to slide between seeing me and Deborah. Um, Deborah, you are really a um, robot so I'll go for you. So um, systematic and explicit instruction, um, we really wanted to um, work to motivate students to be independent learners. No worries. <laughs> um, to tap into the background knowledge that's already been you know, developed, um, K through eight, um, and also what they're doing out um, in the world to develop academic okay. resilience, <laughs> to be able to stick <laughs> with it um, to encourage completion um, and provide opportunities to apply content to the students' experiences. Okay, Julie, thank you. 
Um, we also wanted a curriculum that was culturally responsive, um, that drew from the text um, from a wide range of cultural perspectives, worldviews, and viewpoints. Um, and we really found that many of the curriculums did that, including Houghton Mifflin. Um, but we um, we really appreciated, like Julie talked about and the, uh, middle school talked about the um, the graphics in the book and the pictures that were represented in the book really sort of drew students in to see themselves in that um, with a wide variety of, of voices and genres and, um, and cultural backgrounds and really, um, will challenge the students to be readers um, and promote critical thinking. And then I think we're, oh, Jared, um, would you like to present on scaffolding and um, support just what that is for our SPED and our ELD students and for teachers? Sure, yeah, we wanted to make sure that, you know, the students were um, okay with it, that they could do it that they that it was at their level and it was individualized and and um, this seemed to touch on all those um, all of them uh, the chapters and such were were scaffolded and they were working for all the different kinds of students so you know whether you were below grade level whether you were above grade level there were things for each of the students on um, in each of the um, instruction. And we really found too that the online resources that came, um, not just for our scaffolding support um, and accessibility, but for all students was really great for both students and the teachers. Um, and so because we use Google Classroom so heavily at the high school, um, this will allow us you know, to do that at all levels, so. Um, and then, um, Vocabulary and background knowledge um, was another thing that was important to us. I think that um, really that vocabulary is explicitly taught um, within each unit and lesson was something that we saw um, within the, the, the Houghton Mifflin curriculum as we were reviewing it. But the other thing is that um, because there is um, readers that go with it and many of our teachers are already using the novels um, with, that are within the curriculum, there is a, a less or a sort of a line between the vocabulary um, and and what students are reading. So they're they're referenced, you know, within the text of the the textbooks, but also within the stories and the novels that they're reading. So um, and with the definitions and clues embedded within the text, our lower level students and um, our students who need more support are going to be able to sort of self. Um, correct or identify the vocabulary as they go, so. And then um, this, um, this was really um, one of Deborah's um, key slides. And I think maybe Deborah, I can speak for you without messing it up too much, um, but also um, for the team. But as we really talked, um, the two language arts teachers really felt that opportunities for text interpretation analysis and discussion was important. Um, and the text not only does that within the textbook itself, but because there is that line um, drawn between the text and um, the, the readers that students may be engaging with, um, it gives them an opportunity really for deep, interesting conversations and um, Deborah uses, you know, and Jared use great words, rich, nuanced, deep, and interesting. Um, the literary experience is relevant to students' lives. The text provides level questions um, that provide opportunities for students to enhance their understanding, interpretive skills, and literary analysis. And the text introduces students to literary terms and identifies and explains those in the text. And really, that's what they're going to be asked to do as readers and when they move into the real world, when they take the state test. I don't, I don't like to compare it to the state test, but that's where we are. That's the skills that the students, you know, will eventually need to, to get back to for graduation requirements. But I think really what this text will do in preparing them for college, for the workforce, um, for whatever they move on to is, is more important than any assessment we're gonna give them. 
and then writing. Jared, if there's any of these, I'm just I'm just on a roll. Do you guys want to pop in? Do you want to go, Jared? <laughs> no, you're doing great. Keep going. Once I start, it's just hard to stop. Um, it was really fun to sit with everybody. Oh, Deborah's going to add something. She said she would just, whoops, there it went. There it went away. Let me hit the chat button. Um, I'm going to read this for Deborah. Um, she said, I would just like to add that we were glad this particular curriculum curriculum has a progression of difficulty and rigor in the selection of readings to challenge students with advanced skills while also having scaffolding tools to help our students who struggle. This is great for differentiated learning. Very well said, Deborah. Just keep typing away. Um, so I think what she just said too, writing is embedded um, and is purposeful. So much of what students have to do at the high school level um, with writing goes beyond what they're doing in the English language arts classroom. And so a writing curriculum that helps, um, helps them just be prepared for all of their classes and beyond high school is really important. And um, this, uh, this curriculum did that, which, you know, it included syntax, semantics, grammar, sentence types, um, writing assignments that are again, connected to the reading um, that support for the English language learner, developmentally appropriate grammar lessons, and it's the writing instruction is embedded within the text and is purposeful. All right, so um, student voice um, and relevant student representation. Jared, do you want to talk about this one and the, the what we saw in the text? Sure. Um, we were, you know, it was important to us to have um, something that was visually appealing to the students. Um, and this was one of the more visually appealing ones. The photos were actual recent photos. Everything was up to date. Um, all the contents looked good. It was reliable. Um, it, it, it was experiences that were relevant to the students and um, they were, uh, specific prompts that really helped. So you could just, you know, talk about each thing and it worked for us. Awesome, thank you. Deborah. if there's anything you wanna add, feel free to type it into the chat. <laughs> um, and then our last one was assessments. You know, um, we have adopted iReady, which really works for our students, um, but not all of our students you know, are, will need to continue to be assessed on the iReady level because they may have passed that. But um, it does have the screening and the diagnostic tools as well within HMH. So just to supplement what we're seeing in iReady. Um, and then assessments, the assessments are appropriate and they are standards based. Um, and, um, and it requires that students demonstrate comprehension that they cite that text evidence, which is so important. Um, and then just consider the deeper meaning um, and use analysis. And Deborah wrote in the chat, um, also we uh, also very excited to share the HMH with the middle school. We enjoyed our time with them to talk about the alignment. They do such a good job preparing students for high school and we uh, were able to discuss how we can work together more harmoniously. And as it turns out, we're going to get another opportunity to do that. It's been great to be able to sort of bridge those conversations. And now that we have this curriculum, that will work even better. So way to take us out, Deborah. Perfect. So this slide, I'm not going to click on the link, but I did want to include that in our presentation. This is just a link that does a nice job with an overview on all of the resources and components that we've talked about tonight. So feel free to check that out once it's posted. And last but not least, based on the ODE rubric, district goals, and the middle school and high school priorities rubrics, our committee's recommendation is to adopt HMH, language arts curriculum, at both of the schools to align for sixth through 12th grades. So. Thank you all for that. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Good job, everybody, both teams. Nice. Good presentation.
Do we have any questions from the board? Maybe someday one of the teachers can ex can tell me what scaffolding means in education because I think I have a little. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> you know, I, Candace, it means that. exactly what you're thinking, right? Okay. It's the okay, supports good. that we use to stand on to get to the next level. <laughs> we just help provide those for the students. Okay. Then I feel good about it. Okay. Thank and you. We don't need to call OSHA. We're not <laughs> sending them out on any beams or anything. Could we get up? Could would Jared or would Jared mind explaining that to him in uh, you know in a little bit of detail? Sorry, Jared. Sure. Scaffolding is just building upon itself. You know, you're moving forward. And so you can't just jump into something. You have to kind of put little place things in place in order to get there. And, and it's little steps, step by step type of a deal. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you know, you can't build a second story of a building it doesn't, in the air. You have to work from the ground up and you have to move there. And so when you scaffold things, you, you put it on to make sure that it's understood and you're going, you know, you can go at different paces, but that's basically what it is. Good. Thank you, Jared. Nice. Uh, hi, everybody. I apologize for being late. Um, I hope Mike explained that I was at my son's track meet and I wanted to watch him run a relay, which they put at the very end of the meet. So I appreciate everybody's patience and understanding that putting kids first sometimes means we come to adult meetings late. <laughs> So I appreciate that. Um, I uh, joined during the presentation. So I've got like some questions, but you may have already answered them. So I really apologize if you're going to end up repeating a couple of things. Um, the, you know, curriculum when it's young and we saw last month's curriculum for the elementary school makes an awful lot of sense because it's like, oh, we're teaching kids how to read. And so I was thinking about this presentation when I was driving back from the track meet and wondering like, okay, how do, like, what do you look for in curriculum when the kids know how to read? And then I, I really remembered um, all the work, like, and I'm so glad Deborah's on tonight because I, I thought of her when she went through, when my daughter went through her um, English class in ninth grade, her essays got so much tighter. Like she cleaned up the way that she wrote. She um, every word had a purpose. And so I, I remember like that must have been a mantra that Deborah was teaching kids. Every word has a purpose. And so um, seeing how seeing my daughter improve with that, is that a good analogy for like what all of this curriculum is doing for kids at different levels, like helping them learn to write tighter, learning to pick out themes in, in what they're reading? And you may have covered this again at the beginning, so I apologize. <laughs> Deborah so, is probably typing into the chat because okay. um, her internet is really, um, oh. <laughs> it's not, it's not, not great, um, but she's putting great things in the chat. So, um, okay. but yes, that was one of the things that we really looked at um, was the writing piece because that's so important at the high school level, not only for English yeah. language arts, but for every class that they take. And so um, really learning to use analysis um, to interpret what they're reading and to be able to have discussions around it um, and then put that in writing. So, you know, just really looking at it uh, full scale um, and, then, and then honing in on those writing skills, but also the use of vocabulary, you know, with what, what they're reading and what they're learning um, was important as well. And Lacey, I think you probably missed this section, but Patrick actually went into how it addressed the different areas of writing. Perfect. And then uh, the grammar is both embedded in the literature as well as a separate grammar practice book. And as a former mm -hmm. English teacher, I love the separate grammar practice book. Um, yeah. And so our team really liked that um, because kids would kind of get it in both areas. And one of the things that middle schoolers really struggle with is both grammar 
as well as organization. And so there are graphic organizers to build up those writing skills, as well as uh, things that teach students how to take notes, which is something we've been talking about at the middle school. So right. um, those were all, okay. I can go over the, the part that you missed separate if you want at, at a different time. <laughs> okay, I, and, and I'm sure if, if the presentation slides were just sent out, I can catch them afterwards, so. Yeah, I, as like right now with Mr. Hartsfield teaching my son, like he's got to be beating commas into him, like when to use them and when not to use them. So he started out overusing them. Now he's getting cleaner. And so it's like this whole cycle of that. And um, I'm glad the curriculum seems to be in alignment with all of that. And you guys love it. So um, I, I don't have any more questions. Thank you. <laughs> Mike, are you um, running the meeting? Do you want me to take it over at this point? Where, yeah, any, any where time, are you? Just jump right in there, no problem. Okay, okay, all right. Um, so at this point, we've got the presentation. Uh, we have the adoption of the curriculum scheduled for new business, but we have one unfinished business item that we need to attend to first. So is there any other questions for the presentation team that's on Zoom right now? Okay, uh, we are going to move on to unfinished business. Uh, the presentation team, if you guys want to stay on um, for the approval piece, you're welcome to. If you want to jump off so you can get to your evening, um, feel free. It, it won't be an offense at all to us. We totally understand that there are many competing priorities tonight. So, all right, we uh, will move on to the unfinished business, which is, um, bye everyone, uh, which is approving the superintendent evaluation. And so I have a statement that I am going to read, which summarizes the um, summarizes our discussion from our executive session that we held with Mr. Johnson last month. So I'm going to read that statement in, and then uh, I will ask for a motion to approve this statement. Um, the Cresswell Board of Directors has completed the annual evaluation of Superintendent Mike Johnson. Superintendent Johnson has been on the job since July 1, 2019, and this evaluation is for the academic school year 2021 to 2022. The evaluation process included two data sources, uh, Superintendent Johnson's self-evaluation, which was presented to the board during a March executive session, and then the board's direct observations and experiences with him. The board speaks with one voice and provides one evaluation for the superintendent. This year's evaluation focused on um, four superintendent goals and seven national standards of performance. The Crestwell School Board believes Superintendent Johnson has been an effective and accomplished leader for our school district. Mike facilitated the start of our school year with in-person learning for our students, while at the same time continued with an online academy for our families that felt this option was better suited for their children and has been able to keep our district open during the year as well. Managing two systems of schooling has been difficult, taxing on our teachers and our administrators, but certainly needed for our students. When the students returned to the buildings last September, our professional educators saw students facing larger than normal academic achievement gaps. But the assessment data the principals have recently shared with the board in showing is, is showing significant progress across all grades, and the year isn't over yet. Last summer, he was able to create a summer school program that kept students engaged and learning through the summer months and helped many students earn additional credits at the high school level. We've seen his continual use of data systems to focus on improvement and growth in our learning systems. Throughout the year, we saw him build and rely on the strengths of many of the very knowledgeable and professional staff in our schools. The district is more engaged with the community and the parents under his leadership. He's raised the standards for our families to be able to provide input and feedback and to participate in community events on our district campus. 
Mike, we wanna thank you for your dedication to our district and for your leadership in continuing to improve student achievement and doing what is best for our community's kids. Well, thank you. I accept and on behalf of the entire A team and uh, the work <laughs> that we've been able to accomplish, I appreciate that. That's a really good evaluation. <laughs> We appreciate all the work that you do. And we also recognize that behind you, you have a whole district of professionals that are working just as hard as you do. So in, in our eyes, the, the recommendation or the evaluation is also a reflection of everybody else that's working alongside you. All right. I move so I to approve the Thank you. superintendent <laughs> evaluation. I'll second that. Great, thank you. Any discussion? All right, all in favor, raise your hand. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, great. That was unanimously approved. All right, we will move on to new business, uh, which is ELA curriculum adoption for the middle school and the high school. So we need a motion on the table for that. I move to approve the middle school, high school adoption for ELI. I second. Great. Any questions on that? And that motion references the named curriculum that was in the presentation, just stating that for, <laughs> for the record. Okay, all in favor, raise your right hand or any hand. Great. All right, got it, thank you. Mark, you can't raise two. <laughs> Sorry, count hands, I'm gonna get confused. Okay, all right, next um, item up is our school district calendar. We need a motion to approve it. Mike, do you wanna talk about this calendar at all? Uh, just to reassure the board that the, uh, the calendar does meet uh, the instructional hours requirements in division 22 standards. Uh, 171 student contact days for Crestville High School, Crestville Middle School, and 170 student contact days for CES. Uh, the semesters are almost 50% divided. I mean, as close as you can get. 85 first semester student contact days and 86 second semester student contact days. For the CBA with our with our teachers association. And in comparison with our other districts, we are in close alignment, if not on point with uh, the majority of the, the districts within Lane County. Great. All right. I move to approve the 2022-2023 Crestville School District calendar. I second. Awesome, thank you. Any other questions about the calendar? Okay, all in favor, raise one hand. <laughs> thank you, Mark. <laughs> awesome, that is approved, unanimous. All right, we are moving right along. Uh, we have an information item about our ODE school district audit. Mike, you wanna talk about this? Yeah, I just wanted to bring this forward to the board. I mean, uh, we, I, I've received two communications for ODE on the audit, on the acceptance and the approval of our audit. And haven't, one of these is, is the first, this is the first time I've seen anything directly from them to our business manager and uh, complimenting the business manager on the work done with the audit. And that's outstanding. I just wanted to, to say that and, and to commend Chanel for a job well done. It's a tough one to tackle. I know it was nerve wracking. I saw many late night lights over here and things and early morning, big eyes, droopy eyes, the whole deal. So, I mean, just a ton of work goes into an audit. And then you have the official letter of approval from, uh, from ODE to, to the district and um, I just, I just have to say that was a, that was well received. I appreciated receiving both of those documents from ODE. So good on you, Chanel. Uh, 
Awesome. Any, any questions about that audit? One other comment I would make is yeah. uh, in recent years, you know, that, I mean, this is a, a good move in the right direction for us with ODE and these audits and with our auditor as well. We get uh, a lot of compliments from, from all of them. And it wasn't that long ago where our audits were having discrepancies or di inefficiencies, I would say, inefficiencies. And that has all been taken care of. Awesome. Any questions around that? Okay. Yes, All right. Well done, Chanel. Excellent job. Super. Thank you all. All right. Next item, budget calendar reminder. I uh, just want to bring it back up so that folks see the timeline that we're operating with here. And uh, Chanel informs me, assures me that we are on schedule. So looking good, but we have some dates coming up. They're coming up in just a few weeks. So uh, keep your eyes on those. Okay, <clears throat> we'll do. Thank you for putting that in there as a reminder, Mike. You bet. Okay, next item. Uh, you guys all saw that Ashley uh, needed to resign her permission or permission, her position in uh, my whole body is still freezing and apparently so is my, my tongue. Um, <laughs> so she needed to resign for uh, professional work reasons. So I'm sad that that, that needed to happen, but I support love supporting, you know, working moms trying to, to get somewhere. So uh, we need to do a few things here. Uh, we need to accept her, accept her resignation letter as a motion. Um, and then Mike, when we amended the motion at the beginning, the vice chair position that she's vacating, is that going as number seven or number six? I just wanna make sure I get the right order. Number five. Number five B, maybe if that five B, yeah. Okay, all right, perfect. Okay, so we'll take the motion to accept her resignation um, first. I move to sadly accept Ashley Miller's resignation from the Crestwell School Board. I would second that, sadly. Okay, all right, all in favor of accepting the resignation. Great, I know this is an awkward step because we don't wanna have to do it, but okay. Um, and Ashley obviously is vacating the vice chair role and um, I definitely work off of the team, team approach that I wanna back up, I need a buddy. <laughs> so we need to fill the vice chair role and I love being able to have new people cycle through the leadership positions because it is quite a learning journey and being able to work with the superintendent and the board secretary through some of that's pretty cool. Marilyn, I saw you raise your hand. Uh, first, you need to do the action to declare the vacancy. Oh, that's not the same step as accepting no. the resignation. Okay, no. so we need They're a two motion. Separate things. Two okay, separate. So, so I need a motion to declare a vacancy. I move to declare a vacancy of, uh, on the school board of directors position seven. Thank you. A second. Okay, thank you. All in favor? of knowing that, perfect, thank you. Marilyn, thank you so much for separating that out. I think we talked about that, but in, I got confused that one, one motion would do it both. So I really appreciate you helping me understand that. You're welcome. Okay, okay, all right, um, back to vice chair. Now that we do have a vacancy, <laughs> vice chair. Um, I love it when new people cycle through leadership because it's a great learning opportunity. Um, I would like to nominate Debbie to be the vice chair um, to fi finish filling out this school year. Um, 
and, and help me out with that role. Debbie, are you amendable to that? I am. And awesome. I nominate Debbie Wilkerson to the vice chair position. I second for that. Great. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody else that would like to be considered for nomination? I see Candace shaking her head no. <laughs> Mark shaking Mark? his head no. Okay, Mark shaking his head no. All right, uh, then let's vote on Debbie uh, finish finishing out the school year as our vice chair. All in favor, raise your hand. You can vote, Debbie. I know it's weird, but you do it. <laughs> Got it. All right. Unanimous. That's fantastic. Thank you. And Debbie, thank you so much for stepping up and helping with this. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Number six was declare the vacancy. So I got ahead of myself with the vice chair. Um, so we got that wrapped up. Okay, on to trustee reports. Um, oh, we want to be able to read a resolution in for Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, Candace, would you read that resolution in for us, please? Oh, I didn't ask you ahead of time, but would you That's be able okay. to? <laughs> yeah. I'll work on it. Sorry, my eyes aren't that great there. Okay, so Teacher Appreciation Week resolution. Whereas teachers mold future citizens through guidance and education and whereas teachers encounter students of widely differing backgrounds and whereas our country's future depends upon providing quality education to all students and whereas teachers spend countless hours preparing lessons, evaluating progress, counseling and coaching students and performing community service and whereas our community recognizes and supports its teachers in, education, in educating the students of this community now, therefore, be it resolved that the Crestwell School Board of Directors <clears throat> proclaim May 2nd through 6th, 2022 to be Teacher Appreciation Week, and be it further resolved that the Crestwell School Board of Directors strongly encourages all, member, all members of our community to join in with it personally, join in personally expressing appreciation to our students, our teachers, sorry, for their dedication and devotion to their work. Adopted this the 13th day of April, 2022. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Candace. Marilyn, do we need a motion to approve the resolution or reading it in is fine? Reading it in is fine. You don't need a okay. motion. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. So we are set to be able to recognize all of our teachers in May with that. All right, why don't we do a brief round of uh, reporting out what, what folks have been up to, seen, or learned over the last month. Um, Candace, do you wanna go first? I can. Um, I don't remember a lot other than... Um, <laughs> softball, 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 softball. Softball, softball, softball. <laughs> a very cold, rainy game last night. Um, and we're five and four this season, so I'll take that. So uh, that, is, that is what <laughs> has been going on most evenings in our household. Awesome, thank you. Debbie, what about you? Um, I don't remember much either. Oh, I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> that was a good answer. Um, I am just booster club auction, booster club auction, booster club auction. That's what I've been working on. And um, also I did attend a training in Salem with a number of you last week. So that's pretty much what I have. Debbie, remind me I have stuff for you for that auction that I oh, need to. I am willing to take it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Mike, what have you been up to? Um, I got my school tour uh, a couple weeks ago, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, Mr. Johnson, you need to get another pair of track shoes to keep up with those people. But I, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. They were great. And I had a chance to talk to Amy Aguero and I talked to Joel and uh, that group is not only really really smart but a lot of common sense and really appreciate the kids and, and I really I really enjoyed every minute of it um, the other thing I went to the bond conference in Salem which was very interesting uh, a lot more to that than I thought there would be but other than that that's about it fantastic all right Tim uh, March 17th was a work session and Chad Hymas 
Uh, March 30th was a meeting with Mike Johnson. March 31st was uh, bargaining with the CEA. And April 8th was OSBA bonds, ballots, and buildings conference in Salem, where, thank you, Lacey, I did not have to drive. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> and uh, that was very informative and hopefully useful. Mm -hmm. Mark, what's happening in your world? So I had planned on attending the bond um, training, but unfortunately something came up. I was not able to. Um, other than that, just, uh, yeah, just being here in the school district. Fantastic. That's great. Yeah, I attended the bond conference as well and thought that was um, really informative. Um, so we'll, we'll look forward to conversations about what we're doing with our facilities in the months to come. And uh, we've got both, uh, we've got bargaining happening with both unions, the teachers union and the classified union. So that's occurring. Um, and yeah, I just really appreciated the district partnering with some community members to bring Chad Hymas in. I thought that was a really um, I, as I've talked with teachers and other people around the district, um, I hear the different things that people got out of it. And just yesterday, there was an elementary school teacher that came up and said, it was just, it was really refreshing to hear um, how he spoke. And he really reaffirmed that the job that they're doing is a really important job. So I loved hearing that that's, that's what a, an elementary school teacher had taken away from that. Um, and so over the last month, I've had just a few of those uh, people indicate that, the, that he, he spoke to them in what, what they needed to hear. So that was really good. All right. All right so we, we will move on uh, to business manager report. Any questions for Chanel or Chanel, is there anything you'd like to highlight? You don't have to. I just want to give you the chance if you do. <laughs> uh, I think I'm good. I'll have much more highlights uh, this next month for you. <laughs> I bet lots you will. Of, <laughs> lots of finance to talk about. Okay. All right. I think we will move on. Technology and maintenance. Any questions for Joel? Or Joel, is there anything you want to highlight? Uh, actually, uh, today we had our GMAX test. Uh, I referenced that we were having that in the next few days. So indeed, that happened today. I'll have the I had an, uh, they gave me the report, a written report will be given to me uh, uh, later this week um, or by next early next week. I'll include that in my next week's next month's board report. But mm -hmm. we passed in flying colors. They take ten locations, and that's really important at GMAX, um, both for liability purposes and just for the fact that it it puts that T and crosses the T and dots the I on that project being completed. So I'm pretty happy about that. And I can answer any questions on any other items that are in the, uh, on my report. If there are any. The, the middle school students are so pumped to have their field redone, Joel. <laughs> yeah, I missed the opportunity. I was, I like including pictures in my board report and I missed the opportunity. I was driving by uh, the second day the field had gotten opened and I saw all the kids out there. It was a nice sunny day, remember the sun. Remember that thing that used to be around? Anyway, um, I, I, I didn't get fast enough to get a picture and I missed the opportunity, but yes, you're right. It's a, it's a very popular field. We're gonna have some signs go up because of its popularity. It's also popular with our community and we wanna protect that field and keep it mm -hmm. for nearly as long, if not that we've had the other one and uh, keep it in really good shape. So some new signs will go up, reminding folks about just good manners and good things to do on that field to keep it in good pristine shape but yeah you're right they do like that field and I it's really nice to see them like it it's good yeah hey the the synthetic that they use on that field is so it's it's advanced so much since the old field was mm -hmm. put on there that I mean it's so soft mm -hmm. it, it's just amazing on on how the quality of that turf but also we recycled the old turf 
there's there's pieces of the old turf all around Crestwell. People wanted that stuff for their for their gra their lawns, their really their, patios, their porches. I don't know, but it's they were all over the place like ants on a sugar cube. <laughs> uh, uh, one thing, the, it's true. My my that's my fantastic. Phone, yeah, I had texts and phones from a variety of folks who, you know, folks I hadn't heard from for a while. Hey, I hear you have some turf. And, yeah, and then we also saved back um, some with. The idea of supporting our sports program at baseball, softball, they like to use it. Softball hasn't necessarily used it, but baseball likes to use it for their um, for some of their field activity areas. And so they saved, asked us to save some back, and we did. We're working with a local guy who's storing it for us, which is really cool. So, yeah, it's nice to see that the, even the old turf is getting some use. Can they put that in the bullpens? Yes. Actually, that's what we're doing at the softball. We're gonna. That's a summer project. That we're going to do for the uh, not softball. Sorry, I said softball. I'm looking at you, Candace. When I said that, I meant the softball has sand in it because that's what you guys like. Yes. But um, the uh, the baseball had turf originally, but it's starting to wear out, and so this turf that we yeah. brought is going to replace it. Gotcha. Good. Awesome. All right. Anything else for technology? Okay. Transportation. Man, those bus drivers are driving a lot of miles. They, they we are. are so, yeah, we are so thankful that they are able to get out and work in field trips for our kids because across the board, field, our kids are so excited to have field trips back. So I have to tell you, I, I, I will share a quick story that, um, so I had a meeting, I have, you know, I, I meet with Sarah pretty regularly and she was talking to me about the uh, fourth grade was going to be restarting their annual trip to the state capitol and that's something they do every year it's part of the curriculum and so she was talking about how many buses they were going to be taking and, and I was listening and we were all talking about it and she was excited about the fact that they were going to be able to do it and uh, later that night my granddaughter who was in the fourth grade <laughs> says to me just the first, I mean, I, I, I was having dinner with them and she says, grandpa, we're going to the state Capitol. And she just, so the perspective from her was so excited. She was just excited about going to the state Capitol and as a field mm -hmm. trip. And I just thought it was pretty cool. So you're absolutely right. The kids are excited about field trips. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any, any questions or any other comments on our transportation? Okay, special services. Anything you want to highlight, Amy? You can find my mute button there. Um, I just would say we're in the process of hiring for kids. That was there was a, a section in there on our kids program for this summer, and have some wonderful candidates that we're that we're chatting with and looking forward to partnering with United Way on that program as well again this year. Um, there was some reporting information there around high cost. And so we're starting to work with our local partners in terms of those slots for students that we um, utilize outside placements for. And so that's where that high cost disability count comes into play for many of those kiddos mm -hmm. who we require extra services for. So in case you're wondering what that number exactly means. Um, and I think that's it. Let me know if you have any questions about any of the other content that I have there. Can, Amy, can you go over that high cost disability? So we're, we're allotted, like in the state formula, mm -hmm. we're, we're allotted a number for a, like a general population student. And then there's an additional weighting for, for something else. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember what that is. And there's a lot of, this, yep. Go ahead. Is this above that? Correct. Like so, so for so, so we, um, I sit down with Chanel and Brianna and our our um, finance department. We run through all the costs associated with students, and that includes everything from we have certain students that require interpreting services. Um, they require special communication devices. All of those come with a cost, and sometimes personnel associated. So, some of our students require nursing care or one-on-one -on -one assistance. And so we include the salary of those individuals. We include the cost of the um, even uh, communication devices. 
uh, sign language interpreter, the, the transportation, all of those pieces that go into the complete education of the student, when they start creeping up to that $30,000 point, so we're reimbursed by the state in general about $10,000. I'm, I'm overestimating there, but just to give you some quick numbers, about $10,000. When we get up to that $30,000 point, then we can start getting reimbursement from the state. And so that number that you're seeing there is all students who have exceeded $30,000 in cost. Um, and again, that includes the comprehensive everything from, from personnel to case management, to devices, to interpreters, to uh, staffing that accompany the students' educational decisions. And that is all written into individual education plans, uh, medical plans, et cetera, that help support that student. Okay, so the intuition. Grant, yeah, go ahead. Okay, the grant, once we hit 30,000, we become eligible and the grant covers from the 10,000 to the whatever then the actual cost is? Correct, so we're reimbursed. Um, I don't know what that reimbursement rate will be and so that will be determined. They take into account, all districts will submit those numbers and then they take into account based on that larger number that's generated across the state of Oregon. And then we get divided that extra amount to help cover that okay. cost. Okay. So it's not guaranteed that when we hit that 30,000, we actually get a hundred percent of our costs reimbursed. True. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions on this report? Okay. Moving right along, communications and community engagement report. Anything for Julie? Or Julie, do you want to do you want the floor to highlight anything? <laughs> You're welcome oh, to if you want. Thank you. No, I think I summarized it and we'll look forward to getting okay. feedback when we're able to flip the switch. <laughs> yes, that'll be that'll be good. Julie, I do appreciate the Friday newsletters that are going out. I think those are really well done. You're doing a good job of catch, capturing stuff across the district, and I like that weekly communication. Thank you. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about the elementary school report? Any questions on that? Okay, I'm gonna keep moving, middle school report. Questions for Julie. Julie, do you wanna highlight anything since you're here? You don't have to. Um, just <laughs> so the kids think. are excited, we announced today. We're doing Spring Has Sprung Day where they get to dress up on Friday um, in spring attire, um, but we're also hiding a thousand eggs <laughs> on campus. <laughs> which the kids got to find out about today. And they're super excited because as you know, yes. most things end at the age of 12, which means most <laughs> of our middle schoolers don't get to participate anymore. Yeah. And as much as they want to tell you they're so over it, mom and dad, they're really yeah. not. And yeah. if you've ever seen how long it takes to hide a thousand eggs, it takes <laughs> about five seconds for middle schoolers to find them all. But I'm really excited to do it on Friday and um, so anyway, kids are excited. There are also prize eggs. And if they get one that says that inside, they come in and I've got one foot Reese's Easter bunnies. Oh my and, gosh. So, anyway, kids are excited, which makes me excited. <coughs> are you hiding them all inside or outside? Depends on the weather. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to do, I wanted to do both. But I, after today's track meet and having frozen hands and feet out there, I'm looking for better weather to be outside in. So we'll see. Julie, um, would you talk about the making tracks program a little bit? I just wanted the board to kind of see that as that highlight. Sure. Um, so CMS track and field team, we are signed up to be one of the 200 schools participating in that. And basically what that means is we've signed on to do one mile as a team and we're assigned to run our one mile. Um, and basically those miles are leading up to the first day of the world championship race. And 
based on your week, you're assigned a country to welcome, you get information about that country, and then the students create a welcome video. And because we signed up so early and we already knew kind of who our district was supporting as an entirety, we were able to reach out to them and say, hey, is there any way we could also get that as our school country? And so they've done some legwork in moving our week. And so we're actually going to have them as our uh, school country as well. So that should be really exciting. And kids uh, will be working on the presentation soon and running our leg of the race. But it's, so that's, it's, it's a neat opportunity for kids. That's 200 schools across the country. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'll come back and talk a little bit about that later in my, in my report, but I just wanted, I caught that on Julie's report and I wanted her to bring that forward. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that is very cool. All right. Uh, high school. Any, any questions for Jenny or anything you want to highlight, Jenny? <laughs> um. You're just moving us along, oh, Amy. Sorry, Lacey. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm trying. My hands are freezing. I want to get in the shower. <laughs> okay, Still then I will toes. just say, I think the reports, um, it's all in there. Um, but hey, good job to our HOSA and our FBLA kids and our state champions. Yes. So it is good to be able to go in person, field trips, and getting them out in yes. the community is awesome. So yeah. but to answer Very questions. Cool. Anything for Jenny. Okay. I'm going to say right. good night because it's yes. 10 o'clock here and my in-laws are ready for bed. <laughs> Have a good night, Jenny. Thank you for joining us for the presentation. Your, your team you. as well as Julie's did great. Thank you. Take care, Thank everyone. You. All right. Celebrate. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mike, we're on to you. Yeah. Little bit of activity going on in the district this month, uh, but I wanted to highlight a couple, just the two, a couple of things. The the turf field completion and and Joel talked about that, but that is really a big deal for our community, yeah. not just our kids at the school. Of course, we want them to have PE out there every day, especially and have mm -hmm. a place to have some some fitness activity when it's wet. But the entire community. Uh, is going to benefit from that field. And um, it's just, it, it's a great thing to have uh, for, for the community to be able to use that. Uh, but as Joel was talking, and, and Julie has also been a little protective over there of that field, uh, we just don't want it to get abused. The other one, you know, when, when you're talking a, about a $500,000 replacement, that's, you know, that's a lot of a lot of moolah, but more than that, we have to have it there for the kids and the community. So mm -hmm. just trying to trying to keep that field uh, in good shape as long as we as we possibly can. Um, and then the second one is the World Track Championships. As you know, Joel and I are on a committee uh, working with some folks in the community on bringing this into Cresswell and this opportunity came about from ODE with the Mark, um, the Making Tracks program, the youth engagement program. And that's what Julie has latched on to and has brought into her school. And that's available to all schools. So K-12, this program. And um, I know uh, Hallie had talked about it. I'm not sure what she, what she was, what she is, what activity she's bringing in, but she also is bringing activities into uh, Crest Lane. But this program has so many features in it. Uh, it's just unbelievable. They have this, this ready to explore Oregon, start making your tracks program where they have all of this educational information, all these materials, and you can go in and, and match up to any sporting event with any subject area, math, science, history, PE, sports, it doesn't matter. They'll give you lesson plans with videos, with instructional materials, handouts, 
I mean, you name it, it is unbelievable about the countries, the culture, the everything around the entire globe. It is the most fascinating thing I've ever seen. I can't, I, I mean, that is really cool. Didn't expect to see that big of a program launched out where you could take K-12, any grade level, any subject, at any time leading up to this and learn about history and culture around the globe. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Julie, do you have anything to add to that? Um, we have actually looked at it, and one of the things we're discussing and planning for our summer school is how that could align with what we're planning to do um, for, for that. So it's really nice to have that as just one more opportunity for kids to access and for teachers as well. The lesson plans are free, and, and you can download them, and all of the materials are right on there. So they're pretty engaging. We've watched a few videos just to see what's out there and how it might work for our summer program. Do you know how long those materials are going to be available? Or That I do not know, um, but the uh, you just basically create a free login as an educator. I went in and created one, even though I'm not a teacher, just to check it out. And, and the lessons really are engaging. And you can pick the standards. You can pick the subject areas. Um, I, I was impressed by, by what they had to offer, especially for the fact that it's all free. And I think it really aligns with us um, having them come to Cresswell and then having our summer school program at the same time where I think that we'll have the opportunity to mm. use some of that material. Yeah, the whole relevancy piece of, of having that team in Cresswell and this being the first ever world championships in America. I mean, that mm -hmm. this whole thing is it has the potential to just kind of blow up and be this awesome event here for, for our kids that they'll never forget. That's where we're headed. That's the vision mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. We were talking with some of the kids about the hammer curl um, and they, a lot of our seventh and eighth grade boys went straight on to check that out and see what that was all about. So I think they're really <laughs> excited and they're hoping to like meet some of the athletes mm -hmm. and they were like, now do we get to do that? I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know the answer to that, but it was really <laughs> exciting to see how excited they were about it. Yeah, they are. My son came home and asked me, can we host a Finnish athlete? Like, I don't think that's necessarily where they're like, they just don't want to stay with some random family. <laughs> He's like, just wants to adopt an athlete and bring him home. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it is pretty cool to be able to host a country um, and, and have our kids. Uh, uh, hold, hold on. I'm, I'm not muted, honey. Sorry. My son just walked up. <laughs> Um, I, I do think it's very cool, especially in this day of a lot of division, a lot of separation for our kids to have um, learning opportunities and appreciation for other cultures. So I, I think your vision is right on, Mike. Well, you know, thank you. But the, these, I mean, I'm excited. I, I, I can't, I, sometimes it's like, wow, really? We're, this is going to happen here. But we're having these kids come in <laughs> i mean these uh athletes come in and the the finland hammer throwers are the best in the world they're the best period and they're going to be here in cresswell we're going to have a hammer cage here in cresswell not at our expense but it's going to be here for us to as an attraction and for this these awesome throwers to get into that's a uh, I am so dang excited. But anyway, I'll be meeting with uh, Dave and Lon here, or we'll be meeting with Dave and Lon. I think I, I, I don't think Joel's going to be in the next meeting, but we'll be meeting here next week. And Julie and I will be in there with them and making sure everything's where we're going. But the uh, long jump, triple jump runway and the pits are, are they, they're all done, right, Joel? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and the and the hammer throw is actually going to be headed out the front of the school at High Crestwell High School. So, we've actually had that we did that on purpose with the intent that we wanted to give it a big space and easy access for our community to be able to see. So, well, the media is going to be hounding them. They're going to have the paparazzi out there. So that's good. Good that we'll have them out in front of the school right there. And yeah, 
that'll be that's a good decision. I think that's the right spot. Yeah. Um, other than that, uh, did anybody, did any of y'all have any, any of you have any questions on my activities or? Mike, just a couple. Um, I see that you've got Pacific University partnership meeting down there. Mm -hmm. Is that leading to uh, additional work, classes, college credits? What, what is that about? Kind of all of that in one. We're really mm -hmm. trying to uh, facilitate uh, student teachers here in the district to kind of build our, um, well, not only to contribute back to education, but to um, kind of farm some of those, those new teachers coming out and try to get them to come into the Cresswell so that we can nurture them here, you know, and, and bring them right along. Um, this way, they're getting trained by our teachers for our teachers to be with our staff. And um, so Pacific University is one of those that we've uh, entered into this agreement with to have student teachers here. And when a teacher, when one of our teacher teachers host one of their students, then they can get community cre or graduate credits uh, paid for. I think it's up to three or something of that nature. And there's a little, but we have that deal going with the U of O with um, uh, not Northwest Christian College, what would they call it now? They changed it to Bushnell. Bushnell. Bush, that's right. Thank you, Tim. Bushnell. We have that agreement going with them and also now uh, Pacific University. And we may get another one online if we can. So um, it's a lot of hard, uh, it's tough. It's hard work for a teacher to take on the responsibility of a student teacher, but it really benefits the district when we can do that because then we have a recruiting avenue. Super avenue. Lacey, I think you're muted. You're muted, Lacey. Thank you. Sorry, I was muting because my son was trying to make dinner. <laughs> yeah, we saw him, by the way. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, the other, thank you, Mike. I was saying I really appreciate you putting the time and effort into um, thinking about like the whole supply chain of teachers, right? Getting farther into grabbing some of those um, student teachers and, and, and letting them get a feel for our district and that it's a really good district to work for. Um, and because I know our applicant, our applicant pools aren't as deep as they used to be. And so any, any and all of those efforts are really meaningful for us. Um, one other question, the statewide school safety workshop that you went to, um, did that yield any additional to-do items that helps improve safety or was that a, was that more of a kind of a beginning step? Like there's assessments that we need to continue to do. It was really, uh, and Joel can chime in on this. We, we attended that together and that was a really informative workshop. I mean, it really was the how to workshop, uh, how you get started on it. If, if they will provide us with all the documents to set up the plans for emergencies and uh, safety procedures, uh, reunification, the whole everything from, from A to Z that has to do with uh, school safety. Joel? Yeah, I, I can't really add much more other than the fact that I really, one of the things I took away from that too, though, is, is how it really helps folks understand, and they put this in the in the material that everybody plays a role. I mean, all the way to from a bus driver to a custodian to a teacher to administrator for school safety, everybody plays a role, and uh, and and so understanding what your role might be is important for folks. So I, I that was a good takeaway for me. I was a good training or a good a good presentation to, to workshop to attend. So we'll look forward to future work. Sorry. Yeah, that 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 just that training, that workshop brought the work to us. Now we're trying to assimilate that stuff into where we have our plans set up. We have our own summer work to work on. Uh, you always have summer work to work on. We do. <laughs> 
All right. Thank you, Mike, for the additional detail around those couple of things. Those um, piqued my interest. Anybody else? Anything else? Well, Lacey should know that uh, Lon Robertson presented to the Kiwanis and uh, there is a housing shortage for the Finnish team and uh, they are putting them in houses. Lance, Lance, where are you at? Got it. Yeah, don't say that too loud. <laughs> all right, Lacey, I heard it on here. So. I know he's going to be right here without his shirt on again going, all right, give me my Finnish athlete. <laughs> All right, we'll connect with Lon. We'll see if, if we have appropriate accommodations for what they're looking for. That could be fun. You know, has well, and maybe <laughs> maybe does. Thanks, get Tim. About that. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. There was a couple things. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention in my trustee report. We are going to try to have the May meeting. Um, our regular board meeting on May 11th, we're going to try to have that in person. So let's move forward with that expectation. Uh, the, the reason we had not moved to in person yet was uh, we needed to be able to work through procedures that updated our public comment process. There is new regulation around um, whatever whatever option we have for like, uh, I guess the simplest way is in person and virtually um, people need to be able to be treated the same. So if we move to in person and we allow public comment in person, we have to be able to allow public comment for virtual callers to happen in real time as well. So then we're managing, um, both people there in 3D with us and we're managing a Zoom screen at the same time as well. So what I think would be best, because I know all of us would love to be able to get back to in person, is for May and June, the process or, and the procedure will indicate that public comment will stay the way that it is now virtually, which is written. So public comment for the remainder of the school year, we will still obviously take it, but it will be written both. So there won't be an in-person option to come into our meeting. That's the simplest way for us to return and try that out. And then that gives us more time to develop um, whatever else we need to make sure we develop to uh, to do something different if the next leadership group for the next school year, want to be able to handle in-person comment and in-person, or I guess, real-time virtual comments. Um, so I, I just thought it would be simpler to get us back in person and leave the comment piece the same. So I guess that's, that's the short end of that long explanation. So um, in May, I look forward to seeing all of you. <laughs> that will be good um, and an adjustment for us as well. And let's see. So we also also know in May 18th is our budget committee meeting. Make sure that's on your calendar because that's going to come up quickly for us. And I wanted to thank Mike for starting the meeting and letting me stay and watch my son's last race at the track meet. So I appreciate Mike letting me call you at the last hour and go, uh, I don't want to leave yet. Can you start the meeting for me? So thanks for, for pinch hitting. No problem. Can I follow up, Lacey, on that? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, on the, the board meetings, the in-person and virtual. Yes, if I didn't get that right, Mike, please correct me. No, you got it right. There's just a third element there, and we didn't discuss this because we were we didn't really get into depth on it, but okay. the third element is the security of online. That has been the breach of security from online um, intruders, uh, bringing in these, you know, kind of, they call them, uh, uh, they're some kind of a bomb, internet bomb or, or meeting <laughs> bomb or something like that. That's oh, what they call sure. them. They come in and they bring in some racist language or uh, some kind of foul behavior or something like that. Uh, porno pictures. I mean, there's been all kinds of stuff that have happened in board meetings uh, that have been when you can't regulate 
or secure what's happening online. So while we have them there, if we let the comments come in from online live, then that's something that we can't really control once we press the button and let them come in or if it's really them. So we have to ID them before we let them have the mic in some way. That's one of the procedures we have to figure out if it's gonna be live uh, commentary from, from visitors or guests. So that's the toughest one, I think. Thank you for that update, Mike. Yeah, we, we don't want any Zoom bombing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all trying to be in person. <laughs> Zoom bombing, yeah. Zoom bombing, yes. Okay, all right. Um, is there anything else for the good of the order? You guys are awesome. I'm going to tell you, good board people. You guys are good leaders. I appreciate you. And I know my team does too. We all do. Well, I appreciate the team effort when we're all trying to cover multiple things. So I appreciate, again, you guys, your patience and flexibility and let me be late tonight. And then my mind being a little bit scrambled because I didn't have time to like sit down and breathe and prepare. <laughs> so thanks through all my fumbles. All right.